So with all of the overhauls coming with season four of Diablo 4, gearing and itemization is going to be completely different and the journey you go on to actually get really well rolled gear is going to be completely different compared to what it was before season four. And one of the biggest elements of this is going to be the new tempering system with the new tempering manuals, which is where you're going to be getting a lot of the most interesting affixes. So I want to go over some of the more interesting possibilities that this system is is going to allow for. And if you haven't heard of tempering, this is one of the new crafting systems coming with season four. This is going to allow you to add new affixes to every one of your pieces of gear. Once you get up to ancestral gear, you're able to add two different affixes. And these affixes you're adding to your gear are going to come from tempering manuals, which are items you find all over the world of Diablo 4. You can't target farm them. They're just going to be completely random from doing basically any content. Every one of these manuals is going to have three to five affixes on them. And when you go try to apply one of of these affixes to a piece of gear, you instead choose a tempering manual and it will randomly apply one of the affixes from that manual to the piece of gear. And then you'll also have a certain amount of rolls you can use on that item to keep trying to reapply the affix to try to get the correct one you want and try to get a better roll of that affix that you want. And this is the one new crafting system that you can kind of brick items because if you run out of rerolls on a really good item, you may not have an affix you want or you may have not gotten an affix that you can even make use of. So it's not going to like destroy the piece of gear or remove anything from it, but that gear will now permanently be in that state. So you may just end up with a much weaker item than you could have gotten. Now, what's most interesting about this system is that a lot of the affixes through the tempering system, you cannot get on pieces of gear. And this will include things like giving projectiles chances to be cast twice, massively increasing the duration of effects, massively increasing the area of effects. You can get massive damage buffs to specific abilities or ability categories. You could get massively reduced cooldowns on ability categories or even specific abilities. And even some of those conditional affixes that were removed from the general affix pool with season four, some of those are also going to be in some of those manuals. So if there was some conditional effect or affix that you thought was really good in a specific build or a build made very good use of it, it may still be in these tempering manuals. But because this is a crafting system, you get the actual choice if you want to try to use any of those conditional affixes instead of always getting them on gear and having to sift through all this gear with kind of useless affixes. Now this brings us to some of the tempering manuals and some of these specific affixes I wanted to look at that are very interesting. And also something else to note, these tempering manuals are going to come in three different rarities. They're going to come in magic, rare, and legendary, and this will increase the affix rolls. So once you get the legendary tempering manuals, these stats are going to get pretty crazy. Now the first one I want to look at is probably one of the most ridiculous ones for some builds for the druid. This has a chance for wind shear to cast twice, has a chance for tornado projectiles to cast twice. That's the one I'm actually super excited for because tornado druid builds have been pretty strong throughout the entirety of Diablo 4. Used to be the strongest build in the game and with a chance to cast double tornadoes that is a massive damage increase that also filters into a lot of other effects and procs and I'm also curious how stacking up these affixes are going to work. So for instance, the chance for Tornado to cast twice is up to a 17.5% from the legendary tempering manual. But let's say you get that 17.5% and you get it on multiple items, then you upgrade multiple items through the master working system and you get a bunch of the big upgrades on that roll. Could you potentially get a 100% chance to spawn an additional Tornado? And then if you go past 100%, will that then give a chance to cast a third Tornado? or will it always just be set to cast a second one? Now, it's pretty much a certainty that if you get to 100%, it'll just guarantee to give you two of these every time you cast it. So at minimum with a Tornado Druid build, getting up to a very high chance for the Suproc could be ridiculously strong. And then finally, the affix that's probably the most interesting is Hurricane Duration. That's up to a 42.5% roll. Now, why this is so interesting is because there are a bunch of other elements that means Hurricane builds are actually going to be viable viable within this season. Because since the game released, we've had the hurricane affix that increases the damage of hurricane for every second it's active. And this is a multiplicative increase. And if you put this on a two-handed weapon, I think it's 36% increased multiplicative damage every second it's active. But we really didn't have ways to increase the duration. You can get up to like nine or 10 seconds, and then there was no way to get past that. But now that we have a roll like this, that massively increases its duration that you could potentially get on multiple pieces of gear that you could also upgrade 
a bunch of times through master working and get a lot more duration on this, you could have hurricanes be up 100% of the time and then stack on tons of different damage buffs and other effects, meaning you are absolutely going to be able to make hurricane builds where you basically just pop hurricane and walk through enemies and everything around you is going to die. I think I've seen some people testing some of this out, but this is a possibility now and this absolutely was not a build you could pull off previous to this. Now, another pretty interesting one is on Werebear Augments, which has Grizzly Rage duration up to 25% for the base roll, which you can massively increase. Now, with this roll, it's going to be very easy to get Grizzly Rage to have 100% uptime. Even in builds in previous seasons, back when every Druid build used Grizzly Rage, it would still be pretty uncommon for you to have no cooldown on Grizzly Rage once you get out of it. So even just having one of these rolls and getting to the point where you're guaranteed to always have Grizzly Rage up 100% of the time, this could actually make some of the builds that kind of require Grizzly Rage to work, kind of like Tornado Druids, this could potentially make those builds some of the best builds for Druid. Because especially if you're trying to speed farm very quickly, something like a Werewolf Tornado Druid was usually really good at it. But if you weren't in Grizzly Rage, you basically couldn't play your build. You had to wait till it was up because all of your spear cost reductions come from that. You really can't do anything outside of it. So even just having one of these rolls on items can allow you to fill in the weak spots of builds, which may be much more important for some specific builds over others. And then we have the Blood Finesse Manual, which gives blood attack speed, blood damage, blood overpower damage, and then just a damage while fortified roll. This is also very interesting because this is specifying a damage or kind of elemental damage type being blood. And this is something that wasn't really big prior to season four. I know some or all of the stats on this specific manual weren't really available before season four, but this also adds in a ton of variation on different affixes you can can add to gear. Not only that, but these rolls are probably going to be a bit stronger than maybe just getting a overpower damage roll because it's specific to one damage type. They would have to increase the actual stats you're getting from these rolls. So it is pretty interesting, especially for certain builds. And also the damage will fortify roll on this is pretty massive. And because this is general, a lot of builds can use that specific one. And when going through a lot of these manuals, some of the damage buffs seem to just be be a lot better than others, even in more general use cases. Now, a really interesting one for the Necromancer is the Profane Cage Manual. And the thing I'm specifically talking about is a corpse tendril size, which goes up to a 40% increase in its size. And this can get pretty ridiculous because the specific thing I saw with someone testing this was using a basically AFK Necromancer build with one of their unique rings that auto casts some abilities, one of them being corpse tendrils, and with a massively increased size to corp tendrils, you can literally pull every enemy on the entirety of your screen. If an enemy can be on your screen, a corpse tendrils can pull it, can pull literally everything from just a massive range. And that build is just very interesting because it pretty much auto casts this ability. The animation is also pretty crazy. It's just these absurdly large corp tendrils just pulling enemies from all the way across the screen. And even though some of the stuff like this is a little bit ridiculous, it's still just incredibly cool that you're able to do that and that the animations still look good and that you're able to pull stuff like this off. Just having corpse tendrils that literally pulls every enemy you could possibly see and depending on how big you could get it, it'll be pulling tons of enemies outside of your vision off screen. You could just literally be pulling together dozens and dozens of enemies anytime this ability is cast and that's only based off of some of these affixes that increase the size of abilities. This is just one of those, but it's a very interesting concept that I think it's going to be used in quite a lot of builds. Now, with all of these changes coming to season four, I've been pretty interested in the possibility of a thorns build. I know some barbarians have been able to pull off decently strong thorn builds, but I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities for this because first off, you have the razor plate that just gives you a massive amount of thorns, but now you have some other possibilities. First off, you have the natural schemes manual. This allows you to roll up to 840 thorns 
as a utility ethic. And it seems like utility is an option on a lot more pieces of gear through the tempering system. So you could get a bunch of those. Then you also have the Thorn Body Manual that's also utility that rolls up to 11% increase thorns while fortified. So now you get some percent thorns additive rolls that could massively increase your thorns, especially if you're using thorn affixes through a lot of other pieces of gear. And this could also get very interesting on necromancers because now with season four, all pets and minions inherit the player's stats, which would include things like thorns. And a lot of the necromancers minions do have ways to increase their thorns. They have affixes to increase the thorns they inherit from you. They're now going to be also inheriting just all of your thorns in general. So there's probably going to be a lot of ways you can double dip on thorns as well. Then you have these percent thorns increases, and then you'll be scaling them more off the minions effects directly. So there's some pretty crazy possibilities specifically for necromancer thorns, but I do think we're going to see some builds for other classes making use of thorns as well. Now with the tempering manual system, you'll see a lot of tempering manuals or sections of affixes where they have basically the same version for all of the different classes. And one of the pretty interesting ones are the invigoration manuals. This one's specifically for the druid, but these have things like casting wraith skill restores up to 14 primary resource, casting ultimate skills restores up to 45 primary resource, and then you can also get some increases to some of the passive skills that will also increase your spear generation specifically for the druid. And you also have similar manuals for other classes, but some of these first affixes can be very ridiculous. Casting a race skill giving you primary resources could be very good if you can get, could be very good if you're using a build that needs resources and you can get wrath skills to be spammable. Casting an ultimate skill and getting like 45 plus primary resource can be pretty ridiculous because there are a bunch of ways to be able to constantly spam out your ultimate. Specifically on druids, even before this season, there was tons of ways to be able to do this. Just having some of these builds being able to regenerate such a ridiculous amount of resources based off of just one affix can be pretty ridiculous and may allow you to change out a bunch of parts of a pre-existing build to make it much stronger because you could get one affix to massively help your resource generation instead of needing a bunch of other parts. You could change those other parts to other utility or just massively increase damage. So those are just some of the more interesting tempering manuals I wanted to go over. This is, I think, the most interesting part of the new itemization system. The affixes through the tempering manuals are easily the most interesting ones and some of the most game-changing ones. We've already seen that, such as the increased duration to Hurricane now allows you to actually make Hurricane builds. Literally, that one tempering manual with one affix on it has allowed a new build to be created that's actually looking to be very strong. And this is only a handful of manuals. There's over 250 of these, and there's a pretty good possibility that they'll just keep adding new manuals. New seasons or new expansions could very easily just add a bunch of new manuals with a bunch of new stats to open up a ton of new builds. And they're actually able to do this really easily because these aren't affixes that actually drop on gear. Most of these affixes you can't actually get on gear. So you're not just ballooning up the affixes that can drop on normal pieces of gear, keeping the act of sifting through affixes and new pieces of gear much more simple, but re-adding all that complexity and depth back into the tempering system, you can just continue to expand it and it's just giving you more options that doesn't convolute any other systems. But that's all I want to go over, so thanks for watching.